Our next speaker is George Baca from University of Notre Dame. A young, proud African, or anyone who is keenly interested in Africa's development, I request that you listen to me very carefully, because I have very good news for you. And the good news is, I think we are living in the most exciting period since the turn of the century on the African continent. And the reason I say that is think about it. 50 years ago, the struggle of our forefathers who fought for independence was one of political freedom. They sought for right to exist, to self-determine themselves, to craft and shape a destiny that they would call their own. 50 years later, we have more of that than they ever had or even dreamed of. We have more roads, more hospitals, more schools, more internet, than they ever dreamed of. Our ability to interconnect in this new world is unprecedented. And I think, based on that, the call of our time, the desire of our generation, and the responsibility that we are called on to is to establish economic prosperity, period. Now, interestingly, we are living on what's arguably the most prosperous country on Earth. Now, many of you, I'm sure, know exactly that this prosperity was driven by America's nascent entrepreneurs. What many don't tell you is that in 1792, 24 bankers and stockbrokers sat under a tree. Outside the courtyard, you see a tree? And founded what would become the primary source of capital to fund the industrial age and modern day development and accent of America's development prosperity. The New York Stock Exchange that they founded mostly was the primary source of capital that funded the industrial age. When you think about Ford, the automotive industry, steel, when you think about Carnegie, oil, when you think about Rockefeller, and up to this day, the infrastructure they set up fund the modern day controllers of the digital age, Google and Facebook. In fact, estimates estimate that its infrastructure in the OSE is probably about $19.7 trillion worth of market capitalization. On every single day, $169 billion worth of trade is traded on that exchange. And recently, statistics appeared that 100 companies cross-listed between NYSE and the London Stock Exchange control $1 trillion worth of assets on the African continent. I think if we are serious about Africa's development, we need to think about the trees we have back home. Now, <clears throat> my opinion is that clearly America's development and accent was driven by its big vision and big entrepreneurs, which is relevant. And it, any serious entrepreneur who is serious about Africa's development should think that way. But you know, the truth is most of our entrepreneurs on the African continent are mid-level small-scale companies who are simply supplying small products, scholastic materials, education materials, and what have you. I believe that those are the kind of entrepreneurs that need the chance to become dominant players in our own economies. They are the kind like Alex, who is supplying computers to schools. Our traditional banking systems consider them completely, completely and completely also risky. My proposition is if you want to consider our entrepreneurial system, why don't we who know the relevance they have to invest in it? And what I propose is the creation of an African online exchange that will allow no debt to invest in our entrepreneurial Entrepreneurs will simply get working capital loans to grow and wait for lenders to buy investor in What that looks like is a 
Ramia would tell us an analysis we're going to get a contract to supply computers to the different companies. And Belani and Timon, who is in Zimbabwe, would invest in that contract. Both Bennett and many of us get better after that. Now, Africa doesn't have inspiration. 